We're talking SEC football spring games here today on Southeastern 14. I'm Chase Robinson. Before we get into that, I want to remind you, Bet Online, your number one source for all of your summer sports, MLB, golf, NBA, NHL, all the latest stats, news, and scores available to you and your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. So head over to their website or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online where the game starts. So where I want to start is the fact that we had our final uh, kind of set of spring games on Saturday, uh, on April the 20th. And so we're going to talk some South Carolina, Texas, Oklahoma, Mississippi State, and Texas A&M. Uh, just some reaction. Uh, one quick thought on each of those spring games. And again, it's uh, when we talk about spring games, we we learn some things. You can't learn a ton. Uh, the, the coaches don't put a lot out there. Some players don't necessarily play a lot. Some that may have maybe holding out because of, of injury and, and, and don't want to re-injure is uh, you, yourself during the spring. So you don't learn a ton from spring games, but I think you can learn some some glimpses of, of teams. So again, we want to to go through each of the, the teams that played Saturday and just give you a quick thought on, uh, and, and we'll dive deeper into them uh, through the rest of the week. But I want to start with South Carolina and what I learned by watching the Gamecocks spring game on Saturday is uh, their underclassmen, look good the underclassmen shine in the spring game uh there's a quarterback battle going on there in columbia but uh, it was redshirt freshman quarterback lenore sellers now we saw him a couple of times last year come up uh in some games and they're looking to replace spencer rattler and that's a a, a tough job there as the quarterback for the gamecocks but lenore sellers looked good on his first drive saturday he was four for four 38 yards uh, in the air, 27 yards rushing, and that was just on his first drive. He had a great day Saturday. Uh, now the quarterback competition is between Lenore Sanders, who's the redshirt freshman, and then grad transfer from Auburn, Robbie Ashford. So uh, Ashford's got some experience, but Sellers looking good though uh, for the younger guy. You, you, and other underclassmen also played big in that game. It was not just Sellers, but how about uh, freshman wide receiver? Uh, Mazio Bennett, he had a big day. He's showing a lot of promise for the Gamecocks. Also, tight end Maurice Brown had a big day uh, as he is a sophomore. He hauled in a couple of big catches uh, there, also scoring for South Carolina. And then on defense, several underclassmen shining uh, on that side of the ball as well. But one that really stood out to me was uh, edge rusher Dylan Stewart, who also is a freshman. He had a sack and three tackles for loss. So he's a guy that could be big on this defense for South Carolina. But uh, a lot of pieces to replace on Shane Beamer's team this year from last year. And I think that's a good start when you have a lot of these younger guys who are stepping up and getting the job done. But it's going to be interesting to see the quarterback battle and how it plays out. Who will replace Spencer Rattler? Well, I think Lenore Sellers did a great job of, uh, of campaigning for that uh, on Saturday. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens there in Columbia. Also on Saturday, the Texas Longhorns hit the field for their spring game. And the offense, no surprise here when it's a Steve Sarkeesian coach team. The offense is the star of the show there in Austin. And I'll just go ahead and say this. I think Texas has the two best quarterbacks in the country. Uh, Quinn Ewers, he didn't play a lot uh, on, uh, on Saturday in the spring game. He would come in uh, occasionally, but we know his potential. And, and Steve Sarkeesian has already said he's the starter for 2024. He had a great year last year, great arm. But how about Arch Manning? Uh, he played a lot on Saturday in the spring game, and he looked the part. You know, a lot of folks are saying, is, is he as good as he's being made out to be? And I think in his year of development last year there in Texas, it shows he's with a great offensive mind in Steve Sarkeesian. And on Saturday, he was 19 of 26, 355 yards, and three touchdowns. But Quinn Ewers is still the starter, as Sark said after the game. So the quarterback room is unbelievable there in Texas. They're ready for the SEC, and they also got some great pieces around them. You think of Alabama transfer Isaiah Bonds. Uh, you got Hastings out there as well. 
uh, for Texas. So they got great receivers around these great quarterbacks. The offense is going to be unbelievable this year for the Texas Longhorns. So uh, there's no doubt that offense is uh, the name of the game there with a brilliant offensive mind in Steve Sarkeesian there at Texas. The other newcomer to the SEC, the Oklahoma Sooners, had their spring game Saturday. Jackson Arnold stepping in at quarterback, and his receivers, they're going to be dangerous this year, and they looked great in the spring game on Saturday. Uh, Purdue transfer Deion Burke, 64-yard touchdown on his first drive. He also hauled in a 50-yard touchdown. Arnold going to the air a lot. He's got a great arm. He moves well. Uh, I like Oklahoma's offense. I really do, uh, especially when they're heading into the SEC. And again, he's got some great pieces around him. And it would surprise me if they had more pieces. But I like the receiving core that they have. Um, you know, their defense has, has got some work to do, but I, I like where they stand as well. Uh, but Jackson Arnold and these receivers, they're going to be fun to watch this year. And they're going to be a team to watch this year as, uh, as they move into the SEC for sure. Mississippi State Bulldogs, they had their spring game and the first one under new head coach Jeff Lebby on Saturday. Of course, we know Jeff Lebby, also a great offensive mind. He spent time at Ole Miss as the offensive coordinator, most recently at Oklahoma as the offensive coordinator, and they had some transfers that really stood out on Saturday. Blake Shapin, he uh, transferred over from Baylor to Mississippi State. He was 18 for 22 throwing the football with 312 yards and three touchdowns in his one half of play. So uh, I thought I thought from the beginning when he moved over to Mississippi State that he would fit great with Jeff Levy's offense, and there's no doubt that uh, he is. And he's got some great uh, transfer receivers around him as well. Kelly Acaria from UTEP, uh, he stepped up big, and I think he's going to be a great addition to this team. He fits well in the offense also. Louisville transfer wide receiver Kevin Coleman made some big-time catches as well for the Bulldogs. So I like where Mississippi State stands at this point uh, offensively, and uh, I think they're going to look to maybe add some depth on defense. But uh, Jeff Levy is great on offense. He has a great system, and he has found a great quarterback in Blake Shapin to fit this offense so well. Texas A&M also had their spring game on Saturday, and – Boy, the run game looks good for uh, Mike Elko's squad there in Aggieland. Uh, Le'Veon Moss, 69 yards and a touchdown. Reuben Owens, 77 yards and a touchdown. He averaged 19 yards per carry on Saturday. Also is EJ Smith. That's a name to watch as well as the in the, the running back room. Um, the, for Texas a in the last few years, they haven't ran the ball quite like they wanted to. And I think uh, the system that, that Mike Elko is implementing there in College Station will help some of these running backs shine a little bit. And maybe that's where they want to add some depth as well. But I like the guys they have. Those are just three of the, the guys that they have in that running back room that I think will make some noise this year for Texas A&M and, and help get them rolling back there in College Station. But the running game looks strong there for the Texas A&M Aggies. We'll dive deeper into all of these teams and the rest of the SEC through the offseason as we recap spring practice. That's just some reaction, though, from the five spring games we saw this past Saturday in SEC football. We are your home for SEC football, basketball, baseball coverage. Keep it locked in right here on Southeastern 14. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, share it with your friends, and let everyone know about Southeastern 14. I'm Chase Robinson covering SEC football.